Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about Agile, the most abused buzzword in software development from 2007 to 2012 when it was overtaken by big data, then blockchain and recently cloud native. One of the most common problems with Agile uh, relates to task estimation. Junior developers come to me and say, hey Greg, look, I'm in the team and I'm the only junior developer and we're asked every week or every sprint, how much time will a certain task take? And when I say five days, the other developers usually say one or two days. So of course my estimations are way of their estimations. And what I do is that I just stop trying to estimate or I try to come up with a number that I think the other developers will say. If you're in similar situation, fear not, this is pretty common problem. In today's episode, I will address it by explaining why using time units to estimate tasks is a bad idea and what are some better alternatives. I'm Gregory, you're watching Not Only Code. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and let's start. All right, let's say you've got a team of three developers, Bob, Ben and Ben. The first one's Benjamin, the other one's Benedict. All right, too confusing. You've got three developers, Alice, Bob and Charlie. Alice, seven years of experience, five years in the company, senior software engineer. Uh, Bob, three years of experience, two years in the company, mid-level software engineer and Charlie, first job, six months in the company, junior software engineer. Now you've got a new task. Let's say you have multiple payment gateways in your application and you need to add a new payment gateway. Ideally, you would split it into smaller tasks, but let's just simplify it and say that it's a one feature to be implemented. So you ask your team, how much time will it take to implement this feature? And Alice says, five days. To which Bob says, what the hell? it will take me at least 10 days. Now, Charlie, completely scared, says, oh no, I need at least a month to implement it, at least 20 work days. Now, who's right? Who should you listen to as a team leader, as a scrum master, as a product manager? The answer is that they're all saying the truth. Because when you ask them, how much time will it take to implement this feature? What they hear, what every developer hears is how much time will it take you to implement this feature? You see, the problem with time estimation is that it depends on individual capabilities, skills and experience. Time is not universal. There are a few ways to deal with this problem. First is that you can assign the tasks in advance. So let's say, okay, this task goes to Bob. Bob, how much time will it take? Bob says 10 days. Okay, we give 10 days to this task. Uh, the problem is that we are limiting our flexibility here. We don't know, maybe Bob will need to spend much more time on other tasks. So Charlie could pick this one, but because it was already estimated by Bob and assigned to Bob, we are losing this flexibility. Second option is we can take some average or mean. That's also not great because it will change every time that the team changes. If we have a new person joining, then all the averages would need to be adjusted. So that option is not great. The third option is to drop the time estimation and find a different metric. Find something that is more universal, that doesn't depend on individual capabilities. Let's for a moment leave the world of software development and move a bit elsewhere. Imagine that you have a team that consists of you, a professional sumo player and professional marathon runner. And now you have a task that is to go from point A to point B, pick up a small parcel and go back to point A. If you ask your team, how much time will it take us to do it, then of course, each of them will have very different answer. But if you ask them, how long is the distance from point A to point B, then we can all agree, all, all of your team will agree on what more or less is the distance, because the distance is universal, it doesn't depend on individual. Back to software development, this is what we're trying to do here. We are trying to find a common metric. We're trying to find something that we can all agree on. The problem is that software doesn't have physical attributes. We can't estimate how heavy is a task. We can't imagine that the task is, I know, 50 centimeters long. We don't know how big it is. So we need to come with some abstract metrics. For this abstract metric, we often introduce some unit that we call points. Now, what does one point mean? Nobody knows, of course, because it's abstract unit. We just made it up. So, how to determine whether the task is worth one, two, three, or seven points. In order to agree 
And in order to have a common understanding, we need to come up with some reference features, some reference tasks. So, for example, as a team, we agree that adding static text on the page is worth one point. Adding dynamic element on the page with some simple behavior attached is worth two points. Adding a whole new page is worth five points. Now, when the new feature comes, when we need to estimate it, we do not think in abstract, okay, it's three or four or seven points. No, we look at the reference stories and we think, okay, is this new task similar in size to a one point reference task or closer to two points or closer to five points? And because it is easier to think of something when we have a reference, then we can all more or less agree on what should be the value that we will give to this task. So we have achieved our goal. We have a common metric with some abstract units that are independent of individual capabilities. Now we need to agree on some details. For example, what is the scale that we are using? By far the most popular that I know of is Fibonacci sequence. So we go 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, etc. Another alternative is powers of 2. So we go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, etc, etc. Why is it better than linear scale? The bigger the task is, the lower will be accuracy of our estimation. So if a task is one or two points, then we can see that, okay, this is 100% difference, right? So it matters whether it's one or two. But if the task is, let's say 20 points, then whether it is 19 or 21, it doesn't really matter. We just know that it's 20, that it's a large task. It's much larger than one or two. But we're not trying to have a perfect estimation here. We're trying to be approximate. Then the upper bound is something that you can just tell your team, okay, if the task is bigger than 13 points, then we will split it into smaller tasks. 13 points is already so large that it is very hard to predict how much time it will take. It, was, it might be very hard to fit it into one week or one sprint or whatever, so we will just split it into smaller pieces of work. Okay, so at this point we have a full scale. We have understanding of what a single point means and what are the values that we can use. We have some common understanding of this metric. Now, how can we increase the predictability? Because that's our goal. We want to be as predictable as possible. In order to do that, we introduce a concept called velocity. I use the air quotes here because I think this name sucks, but it, well, that's how it's called. So velocity is a number of points that as a team, all together, not as an individual, this is very important, as a team, we achieve. This is the number of points that we complete within one sprint. Let's say we have a two week sprint, one sprint we do 42 points, another 38, another 37. So our velocity is more or less 39 or 40 points. Now when product manager comes and gives us tasks for the new sprint and we estimate them, we see, okay, it's, it adds up to 60 points, but we cannot do 60 points. We can only commit to around 40 points. So we ask product manager, which, task, which tasks do you want to take out? Because we don't want to promise more than we can achieve. The goal of the velocity is not to achieve as high number of points as possible. The goal of velocity is to understand our capabilities and not to overpromise. So we're not trying to increase velocity every sprint. No, velocity is how much work we can do as a team. If we want to have higher velocity, we need new team members. We don't want people to just work more to, to achieve, to get more points. That's it for today. I hope that by now you know why using time units to estimate tasks is a bad idea and you know how to improve it so that you can try to sell this idea in your team. Be aware that using points and velocity is not perfect. They're not perfect ideas and there will be often be conflicts about what are they and how they should be used. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about yet another idea, yet another type of estimation that can make that can make it a little bit better. So see you next week and stay tuned.